In another video, we built this beautiful little PC. It has a Zotac RTX 3080 Ti, a very good CPU, paired with a 7600X, and on top of that, we have that Be Quiet Dark... I really forgot it now. Dark Rock. Dark Rock 4. A very good cooler. And the whole system turned out to be perfectly fine. Or may I even say it was a lot quieter and cooler than I actually anticipated. When I build it, I believe that this thing is going to be either hella hot or extremely loud. One of both, but... Uh for sure not what in the end what we got here. As good as the PC is, it is still stock or the case is. We have two of those Silverstone Shark Falls in the front and one random, I have no clue. It's, it says in the, in the back, cool Cox with an X. Cox with an X. Uh, okay, uh, 140mm fan, but the front fans are doing the majority of the work. They are amazing, especially inside of this case. This case works great. So, but I digress. This works perfectly fine. However, I'm sure this can work better. Therefore, for this video, we will take the little army of Silverstone Shock Force 160 ARGB fans that we have lying around, four to be exact, and we will see how much more performance we can squish out of this little puppy. Plus, we have maybe something planned special for the Be Quiet... I forgot it again. Dark base? No, dark... no. Rock, damn, Dark Rock, for the Dark Rock 4. Uh, but we will see if that turns out to be doable at all. Before I turned on the camera today, I did a bit of temperature testing inside this puppy, but I did not just slam 100% PVM on every fan, on this case 100% voltage control, whatever. Uh, I did not let every fan spin at 100% because I don't believe that this is, in this case, very much applicable because we are exchanging 1100 RPM fans against what is this? 1600, I think. Digga, 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 uh, uh, yes, against 1600 RPM fans. Of course this is going to be better. So I just lowered it down until the moment that I, I couldn't hear it. And as it turns out, the moment is at 40% max fan speed on every fan. Every fan I'm running at 40%, I couldn't hear a damn thing. I could have recorded the whole thing with the mic, but I would not have been able to pick it up. It was dead freaking silent. For the system itself, everything was reset to, to default. Then I enabled X so XMP for AMD nowadays. I enabled PBO, I enabled Expo on 6000 because of the RAM, and uh, that was about it. In this state, at the very beginning, the CPU was drawing about 110 watts and was boosting to around 5.3, somewhere around that line, gigahertz, all core. And then, slowly and slowly, it dropped down until it reached somewhat 5.1 to 5.2 while drawing 104 watts. And at that moment, the temperature also settled at 92.1 degrees C. Not going up, not going down, staying exactly flatline 92.1 for like 10 minutes until I stopped the test. So there we have a baseline. That's what we need to be. It needs to be at least as quiet as the previous one, favorably at lower fan speeds, because now we have more fans. Uh, and from there, either cooler or a higher clock speed. I don't care which one it is, both would be perfect, but one is also okay. Uh, so what are we going to do with this poor little case? First off, the four fans. We have, in theory, four different positions for 160 millimeter fan spots in here. We have two in the top and two in the front. However, it would be the dumbest thing ever to just slap the regular like lineup with two intakes in the front and two exhausts in the top, because the front, the two in the front would just like, it would pull inside here and then push immediately out. It wouldn't, wouldn't make any freaking sense. In the Cloud Chaser build video, we tried something different, where we installed a reverse spinning fan in the front, which was pumping air in from the top, and that worked perfectly. In that case, however, we had some space left in the center between the two fans, so that the fans would not just, you know, create a freaking circle and recirculate the hot air. We will see if this will work here too, because the fans will need to be squished a bit closer together, given the ridiculous fan size and the diameter of the case. However, if this works, it's actually very easy to find out. You just need to put your hands against it. If you let the, the system run for a bit, and you open the, the side panel, and you put your hand underneath the fan that is pumping air in, if the air is 
cold, it is fresh air, if it is hot, it is recircling the air. So that will be very, very easy to find out. But if it works, we will have the same effect as for the Montec build, where it is just a ridiculous amount of air going in. Plus, we will going to have three intake 160s and one exhaust 160, and then one of 140 exhaust in the back. So static pressure will be positive. This will be fine. But this is not all what we are going to do. We are also going to modify a bit this little front panel. I first need to disconnect the ARGB. Okay, we were also going to modify this front panel because during the ASA Hive and the Intertech, I have no idea which case it was, um, reviews, we also had this type of foam being used and I found it to be A, restrictive, B, it looks better without it, and C, if this is dirty at some point, impossible to clean, except for removing it and then reattaching it, and that involves removing like the mesh structure, and it is, it is a whole shebang. So we are going to rip that out, and additionally to that, we are also going to remove the whole ARGB portion of the front, because I believe it is so freaking weak, it just doesn't make any sense in my opinion. Plus, imagine you have the fan ARGB going, and then you have another ARGB going, layered on top, which it will just look weird. It, it will not look good. So therefore, we'll rip everything here out, and uh, hopefully it will be easy. I just hope I don't need to remove this mesh filter for that, but we were going to see. Okay, to remove the mesh, it looks fairly easy. It's a couple of screws. I could potentially leave everything in and just not turn it on, but you would see like the white portion of it from the front and I really want to avoid that. We are going for the all black without ARGB behind it. Don't tell me it is screwed in from the front. Oh, f Yeah, I think I know why this is so weak. I mean, you, you can barely see the strips, or the, the LEDs inside the strips. It's like milky on top of this, plus it is just a reflection of the milkiness on here. It's This is not a good approach. They should have just put a normal strip in there. Okay, so the problem is, I think there is a screw here and here keeping the whole shebang together. <laughs> I hope that I don't have to remove those, but I guess I do. And by the way, this is also roughly what you would need to do if you wanted to clean that fabric cloth here. Like, because you will never be able to like vacuum everything out once the dust is really like in there and in between the, the triangles. It's going to be a mess. So that's why I really don't like if companies put crap like that in there. And these two screws are unnecessary. Okay, I think that was all. It's already falling out. Oh no, they put one in here. Like inside that little stupid thing. Who does that? Yay, we got it out. So this is the fabric. It's, it works, but it blocks more air than is really necessary. Like, uh, how should I demonstrate it? Uh, I got an idea. I will just quickly dirty connect one of those 160 mil fans and let it spin at 100%. Now it's spinning at 100% and let's take... Okay, there is enough force so that I don't need to, to hold this. Like you can see it, it kind of floats, which is kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so this floats and now we need to put this on there. Okay. So first off, I don't know if you can hear it, but it is now quite a lot louder. That's the first problem. And the second problem is barely floats anymore, or it just doesn't float anymore. You see, it, it, it just doesn't. Uh, of course, this is now an extreme example because I'm pressing it against it. The effect will be amplified a lot. So um, if I would not have put it that hard against it, the effect would be a lot more diminished. Like in this case, you have like, I would say five centimeters. Yeah, around five centimeters between the fans and that filter, but the effect stays roughly the same. It will be diminished, but it's still, it is losing performance just because of this. And let's be honest, clean your PC once in a while, you will not need that type of fabric. The triangles here are already some kind of filter. And yeah, exactly as I thought, screws. Okay, ARGB strip out, that, that's one piece. ARGB strip out, that, Acrylic thing to make it shine is also out, the filter's out. Now it's time to get annoyed by repositioning this whole thing back. And if you are ever going to do something like this, do yourself a favor, start in the center and press 
on the rest of the of the plastic around the frame as hard as possible to squish both pieces like real tight against each other. Otherwise you will get like a little margin in there and that just doesn't doesn't look very appealing. Oh and if you don't uh, manage to like get to each and every single one, don't be too hard on yourself. You don't need like 18 to keep a, a piece of metal in place. This is also fine. However, you can already see I will never get it as like tight as uh, a factory. Like, like listen to this. It didn't make that sound before, but it won't change anything. The fans are not strong enough to make this vibrate. You won't even notice this. So okay, this one is ready to go in the front. Now it's time to remove those two front fans and replace each and every one with the ARGB versions. And now coming to that, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't surprise. I was so proud of this idea. <coughs> Fun fact, the regular shark force kind of fits. Because it's like uh, one or two millimeters thinner. So it does fit. Just this one just doesn't fit. Now I need to fiddle those back on for a fan that it's, whose removal was completely unnecessary. So we removed the whole ARGB thingy from the front panel, we removed this sheet of whatever filter this is supposed to represent and we completely changed up the design of the case, not necessarily to the best. Um, yeah, I can see that my camera tries to autofocus on my face and on the reflection on the case like simultaneously and it doesn't work particularly well. I'm not sure if I like this or no, I, I know that I don't like this. I wasn't aware of how much see-through the front actually is, but now you can see how much air will be going through it. It looks performance, but not particularly well. Like, you see the whole fan, yeah, it is, it's not my thing. Maybe if you would slap like three 140s inside the front panel, so uh, you, you reverse the bracket and then you install it on the outside, that will work, maybe. Uh, that might even look good, I am not sure, but uh, yeah, this was probably a good idea performance wise but not such a good idea uh, from a design stamp. That being said we ran the benchmark for this little puppy now with the new design and new fan setup and uh, by the way the intake in the top front works perfectly fine. If you put your hand underneath it you can immediately feel that it's, it's just cold air and if you compare it to the exhaust at the top or exhaust in the back it's, it's a different world. This works perfect. That being said we are looking at quite the 
the chain. The temperature settled at like 91.3, 91.4, fluctuating up and down. And uh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's 0 0.5, 0 0.6 degrees C lower than we were before, which is amazing. The fans are still running at 40% uh, all of them. And I'm pretty sure if we set the speed to 30% just on the on the front and the top fans and the back fans, basically all the case fans, what we will get is not much of a difference. I can see that we now went to 91.5, 91.6, 91.8, still fine, 91.5, 91.6, yeah, that's still not a lot. I, I, I could probably go even lower. So we did win something. The issue now for me is just I have no clue uh, how much this affected performance, but the, the new fans definitely did something. We have a lot more airflow going through this thing. And uh, just for nice reference, because I have the numbers for the original build with the original fan all at full blast. I will show on the screen because I, I don't remember him right now, but I can also now put everything at full blast. Yeah, having everything at full blast now drops the temperature down and down and down. We are at 80, 86.9, 86.8. This is an amazing temperature for a 7600X. Really great. 85.6 and it's dropping and dropping and dropping. Ah, oh, this is great. 85.4. Yeah, I will not wait until this is done. This will take like forever. Let's set everything to 20. I mean, you get the point. Exchanging the original fans for Shark Force one, uh, 160s and uh, especially adding some in the top is a great idea. I will just remove this because my reflection really annoys me. Especially on the top, it's a very good idea, but if you wanted to, do, do not make both of them be an exhaust fan. Otherwise, you would just throw away a lot of potential cold air, and it doesn't make any sense. So, uh, either no fan or intake. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. So, this works great. Uh, Temperature-wise, I, I am really amazed about this whole build, how it turns out temperature-wise. Very, very, very good. I'm completely shocked. As far as this is concerned, I definitely regret it. <laughs> it, it looks hideous. I, I would have preferred to lose, let's say, one degree C or half a degree C or 0 0.3, I don't care, and, and get a bit more noise than to remove this and, and have this new front look. That was really not a good idea. Maybe I, I would try to fill it back in because I don't want to, I, I, maybe I will reuse the case at a later point and I don't want to have it look like this. Uh, so don't do this. You do you, right? If you if you like this, do whatever you want to do. But for me, absolutely no. So yeah, what do we, did we learn today? Shark Force 160 ARGB are better than the original Shark Force 160s that are inside the ZR1 and you can squeeze a bit more out of the SETA case. However, I want to I want to remind you that there was a gain, but the gain was very minimal. Um, point, what was point five, point six? It's gain, sure. And you could now run the fans at twenty percent all the time. The, the intake fans and the exhaust fans that would still work, but it was already unhearable at thirty. So. Does this make sense? Well, yeah, but don't expect the world. But okay, I think this was about it for the SETA tuning video. Why the hell did I rip that thing out? It, it looks hideous. Uh, this is really my mistake. But uh, yeah, tell me what you think about that front intake, like the top front intake fan. It's a bit unconventional, but I would rather have more intake than to, to just throw away potential air. But uh, that seems like an uh, experimental worthy video. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.